Hey, welcome to Outsmart Your Guitar. Glad you could join us. Today, in rhythm guitar, I'm going to do a second segment on chord connections because there are certain things that, as I call this episode, hidden in plain sight that you may not actually be aware of. If you are, great, that's awesome. But I know a lot of you are not aware of some of these things. I'm also going to show you a couple other really cool things as well. So let's just get right to it. But wait, press that red button down there in the corner and you'll be subscribed to Outsmart Your Guitar. Ring the notification bell and you'll be informed where new lessons are posted, which is usually about once a week. Down in the description, you'll see a link to patreon.com Outsmart Your Guitar. Go on over there and subscribe and become a patron. In so doing, you will unlock material that's not featured here. And you'll also get access to expanded versions of some of the lessons that are included here. Whichever way you go, when you subscribe and become a patron, you will absolutely be helping to continue supporting my efforts to provide you with high quality lesson material to help you become the guitar player you desire to be play the music you love. All right, well, let's go. I want to start really simple, just as we did before. We're going to start with a full bar A major. Now, it doesn't matter where you play it. I'm just choosing A. And this is a major chord. Now, generally, we all know if we retain the fingering and move everything over one string, it becomes a minor, in this case, a D minor. But did you know that if you moved over one more string that you have a minor major seven? A beautifully dissonant chord that's reminiscent of the James Bond chord. From the 1960s James Bond movies, right? All right, so. Basically, what I want you to do is pause and practice moving between these three chords back and forth. Just get comfortable with the motion of moving over and back and forth, right? And then restart the video, and I'm going to show you a little progression that shows you how you can use that minor major chord. Before we actually do the progression, I want to show you two chords in addition to the minor major seven that you're going to need for the progression. The first chord is a G minor six. And you can see the fingering and everything there. The second chord is a G minor seven. Whoops. The third chord is the G minor major seven. Right? So learn to move between these and get comfortable making the motion before you continue. So pause, practice this for a moment, and then restart the video. Here's the progression. Now, as you can see, we're two beats per chord. So just one strum per beat. So just, well, well let me turn up the volume here. <laughs> one, two, three, four, one, two, and so on. Now, as you'll notice, we have the G, the D, and the A sharp constant for all three chords. They are the consistent part of the uh, progression. What we have is a moving figure within the chord from E to F to F sharp back to F and then starting again back at the E. And it has that kind of James Bond thing going on, right? And so you can actually play around with this a little bit and just play the A and the D, or excuse me, the G and the D, and then have the moving E, F, F sharp, F figure going like this. You can have it going a little more. Dwell on each. It's 
up to you. You can even arpeggiate if you want. So pause the video and play around with this idea a little bit. Get used to the sound of the minor major seven chord. It's a pretty cool dissonant chord. And if you can find a place to use it, that's even better. All right? Then when you're ready to move forward, press play. This next one, again, is probably obvious to some of you, but we still want to cover it nonetheless. We start with a typical seven chord. Now, when you're playing a seven chord, you got to make sure that flat seven is sounding, otherwise it's not a seven chord. Right? Okay, now, you probably all know if you move it over one string, you have a minor seven chord. Again, Make sure that flat seven note is ringing out because that's the color tone of both the dominant seven here and the minor seven here. The color tone is important for you to identify that it's a dominant seven and a minor seven. Okay, now, did you know you can move it over one more string and you have a minor six? Again, here, that's the six tone, so you need that to get the minor six sound, right? So, pause, practice this a little bit, moving between it, get it in your head. Okay, this is a minor six chord. It's a G minor six, as this is a D minor seven, and this is an A seven, right? <clears throat> so get the identity, that's why I've left the open circle to show you here's the root and we're at the fifth fret all the way across <clears throat> all right then when you're ready to continue press play these next chords unless you're playing jazz you really don't know these chords for all intent purposes as far as i'm aware now <clears throat> this is a major six. Now, your second finger's at the fifth fret of the sixth string, your first finger's at the fourth fret of the uh, fourth string, your fourth finger is at the sixth fret of the third string, and your second, uh, excuse me, your third finger's on the fifth fret of the second string. And this is a major six chord. It's a very nice sounding chord, as you can hear. Your first and fifth string are dead, by the way, so you're muting those. Now, Got that? Move it over one string each. Now what you have here is a minor six. Again, your fingering is exactly the same as when it was over on the sixth string root. You just move everything over one string. Now, the third diagram shows a dominant nine. You only need to move one finger right there. And that is a nine chord. In this case, a G9. Hear the similarity? Oops. Right? So that's a ninth chord. So now you have another chord you can use in blues. Pretty cool, huh? Pause the video. Practice these chords. You want these. Seriously, you really do. All right? So. When you're ready to continue after playing around with these for a couple of minutes, and again, get them in your head, memorize them, write them down. You've got the written material that I've provided too, so, you know. <laughs> but still, get it in your head, memorize. Then when you're ready to continue, you know what to do. All right, I'm gonna work backwards on this one from right to left. We're gonna start with the minor chord. And this is a D minor because this is your root at seven. Move over one string and then lay your finger down to cover that as well. And you've got an A major because of the fourth string at the seventh fret is your A root. So it's just a major chord and these are partials. D minor partial, A partial. Move over one more string to the fifth string. You may be familiar with that sound. That's augmented, and it's the way a lot of blues progressions end. This is the root at the seventh fret on the fifth string. That makes it an E augmented. All right. 
There you go. Pause the video, practice this if you need to, and get them memorized if you need to. Otherwise, press play and we'll keep going. All right, there you go. More chord connections for you to embrace and start using in your everyday playing. Now, keep looking for chord connections. The joy of discovery awaits you, absolutely. Apply what you've learned here. When you pick up progressions, start looking for those connections so that you'll get the progressions down sooner and get them flowing smoother more quickly. And that's part of the whole point of chord connections is to look for those things to help make progressions flow easier. All right? All right, that'll do for this uh, episode. Thank you so much for letting me spend the time with you. I really appreciate your patronage. As you know, I've got a lot more material, so you should check it out. And we'll see you there.